Yo, 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 what's going on, bro? What's going on, man? Already, already. Welcome to the channel, man. Welcome to the welcome to the show, man. Hey, for the people who don't know, you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, man, I'm Simba. You can also call me Symbolic. I'm a local artist here in the Dallas DFW area, originally from Miami, Florida, man. That's pretty much it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, so let's, let's start off from the jump, man. Where are you from? Originally born and raised, man, Miami, Florida. Uh, I moved out here when I was about 16, 17 years old. So uh, pretty much from both areas, man, if you want me to be real with you. Uh, <laughs> I can't have like a straight answer to that question. I move around so much. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 16, 17, what was the reason for the move? Like, was it... Was it like well, honestly, man, it's, it's a personal one. My stepdad passed away when I was 15 years old of a sudden heart attack at the age of 43 years old. Um, it kind of put me in like a mental spiral towards me being rebellious, doing stupid ass shit with people that I shouldn't have been around. So uh, that caused me to move out of the area, kind of just get a change of environment, you know, um, make the best out of it. And here I am today, man. Okay, so like, what was the tr transition like for you like at that age, 16 and 17, moving from Florida? <clears throat> um, it was a huge one, man. Uh, me being a person that I get comfortable really easily, uh, I really thought it was something that was going to change my life for the worse, even though my family felt like it would be for the better. Uh, but I also see that there's benefits in anything with adjusting to change. So, I mean, it was a good thing overall, honestly, you know, so. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, like, like what, what, what part of Texas did you grow up in? Uh, Mansfield, Texas. Uh, that's where my aunt actually lives. Uh, as of right now, I reside in Arlington, so uh, I stay around this area mainly. I've been all parts of Texas, honestly, though. So. Okay. Yeah. What's it like growing up in Mansfield? You fresh, fresh from Miami. <laughs> it's definitely a culture shock, man. Uh, <laughs> out there, it's really slummy in the part where I came from, man. So when I came out here and saw the nice houses, big open roads, you know what I'm saying? Like all these highways and and uh, you know picket white fences. It was weird for me, man. I, I could. Couldn't really process it, you know, it was a weird change for sure, so. Okay, so like in, in school, like what, what kind of, what kind of like kid were you in school like? Loud as fuck. I was loud, I was obnoxious, but people loved it, man. I mean, I always spoke my mind. I've always been the kind of person to just, you know, hear everybody out around me, never judge anybody. So I was well received amongst different kind of crowds and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, so. Did you finish? Yeah. Okay, okay, that's what's up, that's what's up. Yeah. So like, what, 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 when did you start getting into the music? Uh, I was fucking around at the age of 16, uh, just kind of writing shit in paper, you know what I'm saying? And uh, after a while, I kind of felt as if it was something that, you know, my soul was nudging towards. So around the age of 19 years old, when I was in Orlando, Florida, and went back home for a little while, you know, I had a homie look at me and say, hey man, this is something you might want to pursue on a serious basis. So I decided to go ahead and do that. And um, after eight years of a long journey, I'm actually starting to invest in myself the way I should. So. That's where I'm at today. Okay. Yeah. So back then, like, like at this time, like, were you just freestyling, writing music, or like yeah, pretty much, man, fucking around with homies and stuff like that. Like, I was okay. literally just like going around back and forth, ciphering stuff like that. You know, I mean, joking around, people be laughing at each other. But before you knew it, it was like, wait, hold on, man, like, you could actually do something with your words that most people can't. I mean, you might want to look into that. So I decided to, you know, listen to the peers around me and. Luckily, they were fucking right, so. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Are those people still around you? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Without a doubt. Yep. Some fall, but some rise. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Yep. Sure. yep. You, you remember the first song you recorded? Yeah. It was a, it was a sample on Adele's, uh, uh, one of her first tracks. I forget exactly which one it was, but yeah, it was it was a cover on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was beautiful. It was this guy. Uh, I met in Orlando, he's actually a producer out there, man. Uh, I can't even remember his name, that's how long ago it was, but that song never made it anywhere. I never even, <laughs> I never even followed up with it, but it was definitely the, the shining moment for me to understand that this is what I wanted to do for sure once I made that song, so. Okay, okay, okay. So like, uh, you, you're 19, you just now starting to get into the music, correct? Yeah. Okay, and like, where did, where did things as far as like, 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 Legal-wise, go downhill for you. All right, so at the age of 22, 23 years old, I started, you know what I'm saying, fucking around with people that I really shouldn't have been fucking with. It's kind of same thing as when I was a teenager, but it was on a broader scale because my parents weren't around to kind of keep me in line. Um, I already had my daughter at the age of 20, but me and her mom were going through it. So instead of sticking to that family life I originated, originated on, man, I decided to go ahead and just hop out in these streets. And I mean, most people would know uh, hopping into these streets doesn't exactly lead to anything good. So 
Um, once I started fucking around with those wrong people, man, I decided selling drugs the way I wanted to make my money. I was tired of the slow nine to five, decided to move some fast weight, and that led me straight into me going into legal issues, man. So don't sell drugs, kids, it's bad for you. <laughs> So like, how, how, how long were you, were, were you? Incarcerated? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've been out of jail about 10 times. When I actually got incarcerated, uh, I got signed for two years. Um, it was the minimum that they could assign me for, being that I didn't really have a criminal record prior to that point. But how when old I, were you at this time? I was 22 when I actually got arrested for my charge. When I signed, I was 23 years old. So. Um, I signed for my two years. I ended up doing 11 months, made my short way, so they let me out. And okay, so like, when you, what year, how old were you when you signed? I was 23. 23? 23. 23. I, was, I got arrested for my charge when I was 22 years old, and I got incarcerated when I was 23, a year later. So like, you, you getting incarcerated, I mean, by this time, your daughter's what, three? No, 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 she's six years old now. Yeah, I had my daughter when I was 20. I'm 26 now. No, I'm saying like at the time. That oh, yes. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. She was yeah, like yeah. three, four years old. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, Correct. so what was that experience like? Uh, it was rough. The roughest thing about it was my daughter. I mean, if I didn't have her, I probably would have done my whole piece, honestly. But um, I look at it back now and I know that it was something that was well needed uh, for me to become the man that she needs me to be in her life. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't doing anything good for her. And, you know, God gave me that little time out that needed for me to be able to mentally be prepared for this world and what I need to bring to her table. So. so would you say sitting down helped you? Yeah, man, for sure, without a doubt. You know, back, looking back at it, at that day, I would have been like, fuck this, I don't want to do this, this is the last thing I want to do, but looking back at it now, that's what I fucking needed, without a doubt, for sure. Okay, and like, as far as like, like prison, what was that experience like for you? Say you only did 11 months? Yes, sir. So I guess the rest was just like on probation or? Yeah, yeah. I actually just completed a year and a half parole to finish off my sentence. Oh, shit. Yeah, That's man. Crazy. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh, it was one of those things, man, that uh, it was a long time coming. Uh, having the longest relationship be three years and with the state of Texas and it's something to be proud of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things, man, you got to learn from, man. I, I'm just trying to keep it as a, a thing I can wear on my shoulder proudly as opposed to being shameful of it because it's going to be a part of my life forever man you know what i'm saying so i have to wear it in a way that i can say hey this benefited me it didn't hurt me or hinder me you know what i'm saying i mean so like in in prison are you are you are you thinking about the music or are you having like what's like what's your what's your goals like yeah as far as like in jail like what, what yeah. are you planning on doing when you come home uh, all right first, first and foremost was just getting the fuck out and getting home it was a survival tactic right. but but after that after that after that thought definitely what am i going to do after i get out of here and you know hearing all the the people in there man by the way there's tons of talent when you're in there there's so much people there that could have outrapped me could have outshot anybody here could have outdrawn anybody but they just made the wrong decisions in life so i would see a lot of inspiration in there honestly man a lot of people pursuing things that they love beating on the table rapping you know i mean yeah you hear a lot of people i work with so and so whoop de whoop de whoop that shit don't even matter but once you hear the singing the rapping and all the things that people continue on even without having a future that shit makes you understand that if you love that do that when you're free because you don't want to wait till you behind them bars to do that you know what i'm saying so yeah. for sure that's real <coughs> yeah that's real so you come home you know what i'm saying and and what, what, how you feeling Man, great. The greatest feeling in the world, man. I didn't even know what kind of ground I was going to walk on, the air I was going to breathe, man. <laughs> I swear, I look at it, I, I, I didn't even want a phone. I didn't want to look at nothing but my family and my daughter and just hold them as close as possible and let them know that that shit would never happen again, man. That's all I wanted to do was head straight home. That's it. Yeah. So, yep. Okay. Yep. so, so at, at this time, you know what I'm saying, you, you fresh home. Like, what, what, what's, it's like, are, are you back in the music or like, it take you time to pick the music back up? Or, or yeah, oh, talk about that a bit? definitely took a little bit of time to get the music back up, man. Um, I had to start from the ground up. I believe that you can't just full fledged go into anything without uh, getting your foundation. And I think mentally that's what I needed. I needed to be able to reestablish myself in a society into knowing what I was going to do, like getting a job, you know what I'm saying, and supplying things needed for my daughter to survive because I wasn't able to provide for her during that amount of time. Now, after that was established, oh man, it's foot on the gas, you know what I'm saying? It was it. I was like, man, you know what? I need to start writing, get my equipment back, and you know, just jump off. Hit the people up that I know are down here. To Shout out Chop, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out his brother who's doing this interview right now, man. I, I couldn't even do this without the people that actually believed in me from before that point till now. So, yeah, that's dope. Talk, talk about how, how me and you linked up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, man. All right, so. 
when we met originally, it was in uh, Timberview High School, man, in Mansfield. Uh, we met through my cousin, uh, Joy. Uh, we actually ended up just fucking around in the common area, and it was nothing about music, bro. It was all sports, athletic, you know what I'm saying? We're on our grind. But, like, once we got out of high school, there was a good two-year period where we didn't talk. Then, you know, one day I just hit him up. I was like, hey, man, I'm actually rapping, man. And I, I don't know, I guess I saw him with the camera or something. I was like, dude, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but if you want to sh shoot a video, we could do that right up the road in Mansfield, you know what I'm saying? So we did. We, we met up out there, and Chris like, really, I'm just trying to start doing this. I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it with you. Fuck it, you know what I'm saying? So sure enough, we shot that shit out. I mean, as rough as it was, it ended up coming out as something that really meant a lot to me because it was like a person who was able to give me the opportunity that nobody wanted to give me or was going to give me the time to do that. You know what I'm saying? I, and weirdly enough, he actually told me I gave him that same aspect and didn't even understand that from that point. You know what I'm saying? So once I got locked up about two months after that fucking video, I, <laughs> I, you know saying? Didn't hear from Chris. Chris didn't hear from me for some time, man. I got out, you know, like I said, I had to establish myself. And finally, when I hit him up, man, I saw all this. And I was like, man, this is probably the hands down most impersonal inspiration I've ever received from a person that I'm actually close to and seen it myself, you know what I'm saying? For sure, because I mean, to see somebody build something from so small with nothing but dedication, practice, and the belief in himself, that, that makes me do what I want to do so much more, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that puts a depth to our, you know what I'm saying, friendship, for sure. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I wear that proudly, you know what I'm saying? Proudly, for sure. Hell yeah. That's hard. So, you know what I'm saying, you home, you established, you know what I'm saying, you back with your foot on the gas on the music. So like, let's, let's, let's get into the music now. So like, yeah. how, would you, how would you describe your style of music? I would describe it as genuine. That would be the one word, I, I describe it as genuine. It, it's everything that comes from who I am, all aspects of who I am. Um, I want to be cliche by saying I don't want to be in a box, but if you try to put me there, it ain't going to fit there alone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like uh, you want to feel something that's real. That's what you're going to hear when you hear my music, man. It's not like real like from the streets, real like from, you know what I'm saying, aspect of robbing somebody or this or that. It's real coming from like this is what it means to me as a person to be a person and to show that to you and want you to be able to relate to that. So that way you can grow to be your own person in that aspect. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Uh, you know, I, it's a saying I live by is, uh, I aspire to inspire till I expire. You know what I'm saying? And I live by Say that, that forever. I aspire to inspire till I expire. And I live oh, by that shit. That's a tattoo. Yeah, for sure. That's hard. I need some more anyway. Shit, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, for the people who, who, who tapping into this interview right now on our channel, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they fucking with your vibe, they fucking with your energy. What's a song that they can, that they need to go listen to to get the best, you know what I'm saying, version of you, music-wise? Honestly, it'd be Dreams off of the album Dreams. It's actually the single on the album. Uh, that song in itself, man, goes, touches on everything from my relationship with my father to how I feel you can manifest the things that, you know, you think are nothing but a mere silly thought that you had in your brain, you know what I'm saying? And to me, that describes me completely, you know what I'm saying, from the beginning to end, from the from the negatives that came in my life to the positives that I'm gonna turn it into, you know what I'm saying? That song would definitely put it there. Shout out Dreams, shout out everybody who produced on the album, everybody who shot videos on the album, Chopper, you there too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you mentioned your pops a little bit, like what's that relationship like? It's a lot better than it used to be, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, one of the biggest things that I hold true to me being a father is the fact that, you know, he, he slipped up a lot and he'll tell you that today, you know, this ain't no shade being thrown, me and him have gone through these things, but he, uh, you know, he had a hard time getting on his feet, you know, bringing me up. And so I had a hard time really dealing with that growing up until I got older to understand, like, hey, man, this is really something that a lot of people have difficulty with. He grew up in a house with nine, nine other brothers and sisters with one mom, you know what I'm saying, in Brooklyn. You know, ain't no taming that, you know what I'm saying, at all. I mean, unless you become a football star, basketball star, you're going to end up jailer shot, and he did both. So, <laughs> so, so like, I mean... I think, I think honestly, man, it was something that I, I couldn't really get over for a long time until I got older and I understood that we could establish our friendship. I could, you know, forgive him, not only for him, but for myself, you know what I'm saying? And so he has a relationship with my daughter and me now, and we're all good at the end of the day. And he's the reason why I know, okay, this is why I want to do this, you know what I'm saying? This is why I want to be there for my daughters. That's dope. What, yes, what about your mom? My mom? Oh, man. Weird story, man. So I, my biological mother, mother actually just got reunited with me recently, you know what I'm saying? Okay. She, yeah, uh, when I was born, she was actually withdrawing from heroin. Uh, <clears throat> my dad was in jail at the time, and so I was under the custody of my grandmother for a really long time on my dad's side. Okay. 
And so once I left the hospital, they had to find out who was gonna take me under their custody. Uh, she ended up establishing that with my dad's brother, or sister, I'm sorry, and her name's Jasmine. That's the mom that raised me. My biological mother went psh, missing for 25 years. Like, I didn't, we didn't know where she was. She could have been dead to me, you know what I'm saying? But finally, I got a hold of her, and, you know, we reunited something that I didn't think was, you know, reputable at all by any means. Like, I thought that was it, that was in the dirt, but I had to find out for myself, you know, where this came from and what happened. And, Luckily, she was, you know, woman enough to, you know, own that up. So me and her are cool now, you know, she gets pictures of my daughter and shit, but it's a building relationship, let's put it that way. It ain't something that happened overnight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for, for sure, sure for sure. How so. long ago did you how long ago did you did you link back up with her? About a year ago. Yeah. Okay. About a year ago now, yeah. I actually haven't seen her in person yet. We FaceTime talk all the time, but I haven't been back to Florida in four years because you know, the parole thing, but yeah. I'm saying going back out there on the 29th, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, we ever get together and I can see what's up with her, you know what I'm saying, who yeah. knows. So, so like, what, what, what urged you to even attempt to... <clears throat> I feel like it was something that was holding me back for a long time. I felt like it was something in my back of my mind that I feel like if I didn't handle it, it was going to get the best of me, you know what I'm saying, so I had to get the best of it before I did that. Man. For sure. You got a crazy story, bro. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> hey, but, but, but that makes for good music, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely inspiration all around from the beginning to the end. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So, like, as far as, like, upcoming music, like, what, what could we expect? Honestly, man, I got a couple singles coming up right now and a fuck ton of features, man. Uh, honestly, I'm trying to ride on on this album, see how it's rocking for the next couple weeks, but the upcoming music is coming very, very soon, that's for sure. There's some beautiful things. It's a different sound that I haven't explored yet, so I'm excited to see how everybody reacts to it, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Now that the established fan base has been there, it's going to be cool to see the reactions. I'm excited. That's dope. Hell yeah. So, would you, would you music-wise, would you compare yourself to somebody? Are there any inspirations? Music-wise, man, yeah. So like, this is a question I ask myself a lot, honestly, because uh, like I try to think like, man, Ben, I know you don't want to be in the box, but like, who is it that you know you sound like that you've actually pulled from? And honestly, I would honestly put only two up there. It'd be Hobson and Yellow Wolf more than anybody. You know what I'm saying? Those two artists right there have definitely, definitely pulled my lane for sure. But um, there's a lot of different influences, man. When you think about con conceptuality, shit like that, definitely go up like the Kendrick route. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love that fool. I've been waiting for him to come out with some music so much, bro. Like, but hey, man, as I wait, I'll just create. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. That's dope, man. Is there... So, like, you got a crazy story. You know what I'm saying? You, you put your foot back on the gas for the music. So, like, the 26 year old Simba, like, what advice would you give the 19 year old looking back at it? <laughs> Slow the fuck down. Slow the fuck down. Like, hey, man. As fast as you think you're going to hit that shit, slow the fuck down, you know what I'm saying? You, everybody wants to go in the casino, play the first slot, and want to win a million dollars, you know what I'm saying? And that's not how that shit goes, especially at a young age, you know, you want to put that full foot throttle on it, but unless you already put yourself in the position to be there, it's going to take the time, the work, and the practice to do it, man. So, you know, sit down, learn, listen more than you speak, you know what I'm saying? Take you a long way. That's exactly why I tell that motherfucker, stupid motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapping the interview up, I like to ask everybody the same question, man. Yeah, yeah. If there's, if, is, is there, if there's anything that you need to get off your chest, you know what I'm saying, or something you've been wanting to tell the fans, yeah, we got the platform to do it, man. Right on. Is there anything you wanna, you wanna get off your chest? Honestly, man, y'all keep on aspiring to inspire to you expire. No matter what, man, life is gonna be hard, and that should not stop you from being able to do what the fuck you love. You know what I'm saying? If you love something, there's a reason why you love it. And you have to be able to come above anything that isn't love. And that's all. Namaste, everybody. I love y'all, man. For real. For that's real. dope, man. Appreciate you for yeah. coming through, man. You, you already know. Hell yeah. Thank you, man. For real. I appreciate y'all, man. For real, for real. Yes, Hell yeah. It's all love.